Good morning. Welcome to Worship at Leap of Faith Church. I'm Virgie Holbrook. I'm the pastor of the church. Thank you for coming and making this worship service a part of your Sunday morning. Today we're going to be talking about what Jesus has to say about worship. So I hope that you'll stick around for that. But first, if you haven't registered, if you're watching on mylofc.online.church and you haven't registered, I hope that you'll do that. I think you'll only need to do that once. You might be called on to log in each Sunday. So um, just pay attention to that little box in, that, uh, that's on my screen on the upper left-hand corner. If you're watching on YouTube, please, uh, please click the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber so that you won't miss any of the worship services. If you, if you haven't already subscribed, if you would do that, we, we have, I think, fixed the comments uh, so that you can add your initials to the comments. This is so helpful, especially if you're a regular viewer, to let me know that you're with us on a given Sunday. Uh, if you don't mind adding your initials to the comments, and of course you have another comment to make, that would be fine too. Uh, please please notice that on, on the mylofc.online.church we'll be posting regular opportunities to make comments there, to uh, request prayer, to indicate various faith needs, and of course to support the church financially. And I hope that you'll use those various moments during the worship service to make a response, to make a comment. It's very, very helpful to know that you're here with us. Do see that if you give in response to a posted giving moment that you'll be asked to give by way of PayPal. You'll need to have a PayPal account set up. There are other options to support our ministry here at Leap of Faith financially. You can text to give at 903-225-8774. There's a PayPal button on our newsletter that shows up on Thursday evenings at 8.05 p.m. And, you know, if you're not receiving that, that uh, newsletter, please do text me at 903-821-4505. Again, that's 903-821-4505. Text me your email address, and I'll be happy to see that you begin to receive our, our newsletter. Um, or you can give by check to LOFC. You would just mail that to 5615 North Farm to Market 1417 Sherman, Texas 75092. Um, however you choose to support the ministry of this church, please know that your gift is very, very much needed and very, very much appreciated. We do our dead level best to use it for the purposes you intend, which is serving our Lord. For updated information about the church, there's our website, mylofc.org, and of course, the Leap of Faith Church Facebook page. That was a lot of announcements. Thank you for sticking with me through them. And now let's begin to worship with music from the Leap of Faith Band.
your salvation and tell the people everywhere. My name is Jeff Walton. I'm the associate pastor here at Leap of Faith Church. I'm so glad you've chosen to join us this morning. Leap of Faith is an independent church, not affiliated with any denomination. People often ask what we believe. Uh, we embrace the Apostles' Creed, that historic confession of the Christian faith. I invite you to join me as we remember its words together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, I invite you to join me in confessing our sin using words adapted from Psalm 24. God, our hands, our hearts, our thoughts, our actions, they aren't clean. They aren't pure. We come to you this morning asking your forgiveness. We come to you asking you to wash away all our stains, especially those we think will never come out. Please hear this prayer, God, and hear too our silent prayers of confession. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven, and so am I. My thanks to Associate Pastor Jeff Walton for his worship leadership. We come now to the time of sharing joys and concerns. I ask your prayers today as I do every Sunday for those who lead our world, those who lead our country, those who lead our communities, those who lead our churches. I ask your prayers as well for those who have health-related concerns. This week it's Jean, Clara, Cindy, Phil, Jesse, uh, another Jean, Linda, Sue, Johnny, Fidel, Miriam, Steve, Billy, Jewel, Pat, and Dassey. I ask your prayers today as I do every Sunday for those who serve in the military of our country, especially those who are very dear to the hearts of Leap of Faith folks. Tyler, Jessica, Devin, Clayton, and Colin. We do have birthdays to celebrate today on October 17th. Brianna Ramsey and Chase Gates have birthdays. And October 20th, our assistant lay leader, Paul Watkins, has his birthday. Other joys to share our worship attendance last Sunday. There are 44 online worshipers, 46 in the sanctuary for a total of 90 worshipers. Um, I had the great joy of being remembered in the 11 o'clock worship service last week on Pastor Appreciation Sunday, and I'm grateful to everyone who was a part of that. Um, if you send a card or flowers or um, just, just a set a word in passing, please know how very grateful I am to you for your part in Pastor Appreciation Sunday. I ask your prayers as well today for our Perrin Early Learning Center Teacher of the Week for October 16th. That's Denise Gay. We continue in prayer for Mount Olive Baptist Church in Denison as they prepare for their fall revival October 24th, 25th, and 26th. Please pray for those who will lead that revival. We're praying too today for First Baptist Church in Pottsboro. We recently received word that they have united with Fairview Baptist Church in Sherman. I ask your, uh, your prayers of thanksgiving for the heart of Texoma 
Montessori Academy here, resident here at Leap of Faith Church. One of their parents has built a new bridge, constructed a new bridge in our backyard. And of course, today I ask your prayers for the Leap of Faith Band, for Brad Nixon, for Summer Holbrook, who produce this worship service. If you have prayer concerns, if you have prayer joys to share, um, you can use the comments to share those. But if you need more privacy, 903-821-4505. Don't hesitate to text me. I will be glad to add your joys, your concerns, either to the church list or to my private list or to both, whatever seems best to you. And now let's pray. God, remembering that Jesus promised to give us living water, life, and refreshment in the Spirit, remembering that the water of baptism washes away all that separates us from you, God, as we remember how you've used the image and the reality of water to communicate your truths to us, knowing, God, that you understand how important water is to us, today we are praying for water, today we're praying for rain. We're grateful, God, for city water supplies and private wells and water storage tanks and reservoirs. We're grateful, God, for stock tanks and spring-fed ponds. We know how fortunate we are to have these things, and we're grateful that you've provided the means for us to have them, but God, we need rain. We're looking around at pastures that are drying up, old growth trees that are dying. We're looking at new young trees planted last winter and spring that are now struggling to live. We are looking, God, at lawns and foundation plantings that are turning to dust. We're looking at vegetable gardens that died well before harvest. We're looking at the water bills arriving to those who just aren't willing to throw in the towel and turn the sprinklers off. God, please send rain. We need rain. We need more than a sprinkle, more than a shower. We need rain, days of gently falling rain, days of rain that falls slowly enough to soak in without running off before the dry dirt lo loosens up enough for it to do some good. We need rain, God, here in North Texas. Please, in your mercy, send it. Send rain. We ask you to hear this prayer, as well as our prayers for those who are celebrating joys, those experiencing concerns, Hear our prayers for those whose names we haven't spoken out loud, but who we name silently before you now. And hear us as we pray together in the way that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We continue now for um, another week or two in the Gospel according to Luke. It's the 19th chapter, verses 45 and 46. Just a short, just a short lesson. If you have your, um, if you have your Bible with you and want to follow along. You know, you know that's uh, that you're welcome to do that. If you'd rather just listen, that works too. But here it is. It's Luke chapter 19, verses 45 and 46. Then Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, my house will be a house of prayer, but you, you have made it into a den of thieves. I ask God to bless this reading of God's Word. I wonder if you've ever had any occasion to give any thought to what's involved in keeping a building like this one clean. We have a custodian who comes to, to clean once a week, usually on Friday or Saturday, to get, the, to get the building ready for the people who come on Sunday morning. She empties trash, cleans restrooms, sweeps and mops and dusts. And the staff of the Heart of Texoma, the Heart of Texoma Montessori Academy that uses our building during the week, they do a great job of cleaning up their part of the building at the end of every school day. They clean the, re the restrooms every afternoon before they go home. They clean the kitchen and the fellowship area. Over over to my right here where the children have lunch, our nursery caregivers, they straighten up the nursery before they go home on Sunday afternoon. 
I myself, I have a thing about the front porch of the church, the, the front doors out there. I have a thing about the front porch of the church and wall smudges. Every Sunday morning, I sweep the porch and I knock down the cobwebs from around the front door. Every Sunday morning, I come in, reach under the sink for a miracle sponge. You know what those are, those white spongy sponges. And I go around as much of the building as I have time for and erase any smudge that's shown up on the walls during, during the week. The walls, blessedly, are scrubbable because a lot of smudges show up in the course of a week. I've seen, I've uh, seen that 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 those who worship in this building, they're careful to pick up what they bring in with them, drink cups or Kleenex. Uh, they're careful to take their their worship bulletin to the recycle bin, and I am grateful for the help of everyone who does something like that. But even so, it's just not that easy to keep a building like this one clean to keep it relatively tidy. For one thing, there are the windows. We have a lot of them. Obviously, we have a lot of them, and they're nobody's responsibility. And so the windows here, they are just not very clean. And if you've ever spent much time, much time other than Sunday morning in a church building, you doubtless know the stuff that accumulates in every church building that I've ever had anything to do with. Things that might come in handy someday and things that were tried and found wanting and things that were useful once upon a time. That's why I'm able to offer you today at no cost whatsoever to armchairs, to occasional chairs, to lamp tables. They are available to you on a first come first serve basis. Anyone who'd like to have them for personal use, now not for resale, and can come get them here at the church by tomorrow, Monday, October 17th, by close of business. You must be able to pick up what you want and take it off with you, no delivery. Take these things away immediately. If you want any of these things, text me. 903-821-4505. Again, it's first come, first serve, and the text is absolutely the only way to indicate your interest. Otherwise, these tables, these chairs, they are going to Summer Holbrook's upcoming garage sale, and they're going to be sold there, and the money they bring is going to be returned here to the church because we no longer have need for them here in this building. These tables, these chairs, they are just taking up space, collecting dust, and making this building a little less tidy, a little less clean, and it is not so easy to keep this building clean, to keep any large public building clean, I, I would imagine. And that's part of what our Bible story today is about, about how hard it is to keep a building, specifically a place of worship, clean. We have, of course, been reading our way through Jesus' walk from Galilee to Jerusalem, where he will, of course, end up on the cross. We haven't read, we haven't read about the first part of that walk, which starts in Luke chapter 9, verse 51. We started at, at Luke 18, verse 1, when Jesus already covered quite a bit of ground. The reason that we started there is that in the section on Luke, in the, in the commentary, I mainly use the New Interpreter's Bible, the commentator, Dr. R. Alan Culpepper, now Dean Emeritus of the Mercer University McAfee School of Theology, he designates chapters 18 and 19 through verse 17 as Jesus' gospel to the rich and poor. And when I saw that, I wanted to learn what Dr. Culpepper had to say about that. But after we reached the end of that section, I decided to just keep going because I wanted to learn more about what Jesus did in Jerusalem once he arrived there. Last week, we learned that when Jesus, when Jesus got to Jerusalem, when he arrived in Jerusalem, the first thing he did, the first thing he did was cry because he knew that it's people they didn't recognize that in him they were receiving a visit from God, God's self, the one, the only one who can ever bring peace. In the story today, though, Jesus evidently wipes away his tears and gets down to work. He enters that temple and he begins to clean it up, throwing out everyone in there who was cluttering it up. 
If I understand the situation correctly, the problem is that people came to the temple in part to sacrifice animals as a part of the worship service. Sometimes people traveled for some distance to get there to the temple and they didn't, maybe couldn't bring animals for sacrifice with them. They had to buy them once they got into town, once they got to Jerusalem. If for some reason they didn't buy those animals outside the temple but waited until they got inside the temple, they found that the price inside there was way, way high. Those who sold inside the temple, they were inflating prices mercilessly and the priests, well, they didn't seem to care. They didn't put a stop to it. You know what that's like, I imagine. Maybe you've traveled to a place you've never been before and you discover once you get there that you've left something important at home, something you really need. You left it at home, you're going to have to replace it. And you also discover that if you have to, if you have to purchase something, a toothbrush, say, or underwear, or a charger for your phone, whatever, if you have to buy that from the hotel gift shop, it's going to cost a lot more than it would your hometown, at your hometown store. And that's what's going on in the temple, but the stakes as well as the prices were higher there in that temple. People had come a long way to get to the temple to worship. They had to have the animal in order to worship and they had to pay the unreasonable price that was being charged there in the temple for that animal. The sellers in the temple, they were taking shameless advantage of people who just wanted to worship God. And when Jesus shows up, when Jesus shows up in the temple, he does not like one bit what he sees going on there. He doesn't want to see roadblocks put up for people who only are there to worship. He doesn't want to see the mess that creates there in the temple. He wants people who come to worship to be able to worship without obstacle, without tripping over the clutter, actual or metaphorical. And so what does Jesus do? What Jesus does is drive out those who are making the problem. He makes them get out. He claims that temple as his own, as his house, about which he will certainly, surely have to say. And that's the story we have today. And here are some thoughts about how what happened in that Jerusalem temple so many years ago has to do with you and with me here today. On any, on, any giving, on, on any given Sunday, Leap of Faith Church is apt to be receiving gifts of something or other out in the entrance to the sanctuary. This Sunday and on Sundays throughout the rest of October, for instance, we are partnering with the Heart of Texoma Montessori Academy to collect socks and to collect cleaning supplies and to collect laundry products for Share Ministries in Sherman and the Texoma Family Shelter in Denison. We're also receiving gifts of individually wrapped Halloween candy for the memory care residents of Wesley House in Gainesville so that they can enjoy a little Halloween party that's being given for them there. I do feel that it is a profound act of worship to share simple things like these with people who need them. But of course, bringing these things is not required for admission to the sanctuary, not required at all to participate in worship. And I would not want anyone ever to feel that they aren't welcome if they don't show up with candy or socks or, you know, a bottle of laundry detergent. I wouldn't want this to stand in the way of worship. I don't want anything to stand in the way of worship at Leap of Faith Church, to stand in the way of prayer, to stand in the way of praise, to stand in the way of song, to stand in the way of hearing the word of God spoken here. I don't want you and I don't want anyone else to be tripped up when they come here to worship. In my experience, the main thing that stands in the way of worship is different than it was when Jesus went into that Jerusalem temple. The main thing that I see standing in the way of worship is here and now when we forget to make connections with other people. It's hard to do that online, but I've seen our online worshipers do it when when you respond to the comments that others post or overcome your shyness to post a word of greeting of your own. You know, I know it feels risky, but it's so important to make that connection. 
I encourage our online worshipers. I encourage you, if you're worshiping at, worshiping at mylofc.online.church, to check in, to check in here and say good morning. You cannot imagine what that means to others. I encourage our online worshipers on YouTube to go ahead and make a brief comment. It is very public, I know. Just your initials, maybe, and a good morning. I encourage those who worship in the sanctuary to smile at someone they don't know, to turn around and ask someone they don't know how their week went. The main thing I see standing in the way of worship here at Leap of Faith is when we forget to make these connections with other people. And what the Bible story that we have today has to teach us is that Jesus takes a dim view of those who stand in the way of worship because he wants his house he wants this house to be a place of worship. Now, I personally, I am very glad that animal sacrifice is no longer a part of our worship. I'm glad that selling and buying animals out in the entrance to the sanctuary is a non-issue for us. But I do know that it's possibly just by lack of attention to stand in the way of another's worshiping, to clutter up their experience. And today, today the Bible, today, today Jesus, he's telling us not to do that. Amen. Well, if you're not already a member of Leap of Faith Church, I hope that you will prayerfully consider making a commitment to become a member of Leap of Faith Church. You know that I stand ready to help you with whatever you need you, you may have to the extent that I'm able to do that. If you'll just let me know of that need. But maybe you would find meaning in being a member here, and I know I would find meaning in being officially your pastor. Give me a call, 903-821-4505, if you're ready to join Leap of Faith as a member. Some of the happiest Sunday mornings I've had since we've come online have been when the phone rings after the worship service and someone tells me, that they are ready to join us in membership here. If you haven't been baptized, and if you live, leave, live even a far way away, uh, if you'd like to be baptized, give me a call, send me a text, and, and I promise you we'll figure out a way to, um, to see that you, that you are baptized, if that's something that would, uh, would be important to you in your relationship with God and with God's church. To find out more about us, all you have to do is text 903-821-4505 to receive our newsletter on Thursday evening. You can like the Leap of Faith Church Facebook page or check out mylofc.org. I remind you about giving. Your gifts are so important to continuing ministry here at Leap of Faith. And you can offer financial support by, um, by clicking the PayPal button in our newsletter by responding to the giving moment in the mylofc.online.church giving moment by sending a check to LOFC 5615 North Farm to Market 1417 Sherman, Texas 75092 or by texting to give at 903-225-8774. Woo, that was a lot. Thank you for coming to worship this morning. I hope to see you again next Sunday morning. And if you live in the area, I would be glad for you to stop by the, by the building. I'm here all day Tuesday, all day Thursday, and I would be very glad to, to see you and to chat with you on, on either of those days that, that I'm here in the building. You're also always welcome to give me a call, and I bet you can recite the number by memory now, 903-821-4505. Um, but failing that, I hope to see you online again next Sunday. Now as we end this worship service, will you remember this? Words, words inspired by uh, Psalm 121, verses 7 and 8. The Lord will keep you from all harm. Watch over your life. Watch over your coming and your going. Our sovereign God will watch over you. Will watch over you without fail, both now, today, and forevermore. Now, I hope you'll stick around for music by the Leap of Faith Band, and I hope you will go in peace, my friend. Go always in peace. Amen.
Sinking sand. 